Hello everyone, my name is Nick and welcome if you're new. Now that I've been an indoor gardener for quite a few years, I have realized that I absolutely am playing favorites with my houseplants and that there are quite a few that really just have a really large place in my heart, more so the ones that I've had for quite a while and that have grown really, really well for me. But more so interestingly, that the ones that are my favorites are probably the ones I talk about the least. I think they are more so not like popular houseplants, so I don't tend to uh, spotlight them, but they are my favorite houseplants, so here is the perfect time to spotlight them. I recently took inventory of my houseplants and I'm clocking in right around 350, which is a lot more than I ever intended on, uh, but the breaks are not stopping, so I we're just we're still going. So for this video, I narrowed down the 350 plants that I love into five, my top five favorite houseplants. It was so hard to pick just five. There are so many that I love, but there are, like I said, a few that really do have such a place in my heart. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. This time around, we are going to absolutely rank them in order from five to one, five being my least favorite favorite, and then one being my absolute favorite one that I own. This is just for this time. My taste is always changing. So if you're watching this far in the future, my I probably like five, plants better at this point. For summer of 2019, this is my top five favorite houseplants. Starting off this list with number five, we have Scandapsis pictus. This is probably one of the most prevalent plants in my home. I adore it for the blue-green color that the leaves have and the silver splashes on top, but also for how readily it grows. Now this one right here, Scandapsis pictus exotica, is rather slow growing until it really starts to creep out of the pot like this one just started to do. But its cousin, Scandapsis pictus argirius right here. This is probably the more common version of Scandapsis pictus you would see if you walked into a garden center. This one grows like a weed. I've had these grow up to 10 feet a year. This plant grows so fast, it is the fastest growing plant that I own. This one right here, I have only had for a little bit and I have it pulled back quite a bit in my apartment to a bit of a darker corner. But if you put this plant in a bright window, I grow one in a west window and I grow one in a south window, these plants grow so incredibly fast. And what I really, really love about them is that they tell you when they need to be watered. They will curl in their leaves, so they are normally quite flat as you can see, but they will really curl in their leaves quite a bit, just like they are right now as I'm squeezing them between my fingers. So when they do that, it's when they need to be watered. I say they use their words, and that's something I just really adore about this plant. I don't water it until the leaves curl, then I go ahead and water it. The next day the leaves are flat once again, and I know we're good to go. And a really, really cool thing about this plant is that it shingles. So if you were to have this plant climb up a totem, uh, this plant would eventually start to shingle to the totem, similar to a raphidophora. So as I said, this plant is one of the fastest growing plants that I have and one of the most prevalent plants that I have in my house. Uh, so I have probably somewhere between five to 10 of these around my home just because I know every time I bring one home, it's gonna grow so incredibly well. And I really love to hang this version right here up in a window and then I just trail them all around the window once they get growing. Cause as I said, they will grow so fast. I have two others around my home that are at least 15 feet long that I have just going all around the windows. I'll definitely include some screenshots for you guys to see but just a really, really incredible uh, plant has such an impact on my home and really is the icing on the cake to making my home look like a jungle. Number four is quite literally a monster. It is my Thematophyllum Bifanatophytum. I don't even know how I'm gonna, eh, we're doing a pretty good job of getting it mostly on camera. I probably had this plant for about three years now. I probably had it since about 2015, 2016. This plant has never really grown well for me up until the last few years. And it has really just started to take off as of this summer. So it really has a place in my heart. I fell in love with this plant many years ago on one of my routes home from work, from the bar I used to work at to one of my old apartments. One of, like I said, my apartment probably in about 2015. I remember that there was this loft that I would walk by that I could see right into, not trying to creep on people's plants, but I could just see right in through this apartment. There was this giant thematophyllum bipanatophytum in their apartment, and it was just taking over the whole entire thing. I couldn't even believe it. It was in the center of the room, and it was just everywhere. I loved it, and I needed that in my home. Uh, so I eventually was out plant shopping many years ago, and I found one of these at a Home Depot, like a full 10-inch pot. And I brought this plant home. My apartment then, both well, all of my last apartments up until the one I live in now, really did not have adequate light. So this plant really suffered. This is a plant that probably needs some of the brightest light that I grow in my home. So I had this plant in like pretty dark corners in my home. It never did well. For years, it just was falling apart. I ended up sending it home with my ex-boyfriend for the summer. He put it outside on his like patio 
deck thing and it took off. This thing looked fantastic and I loved it and I brought it home and my apartment was too dark and the thing literally fell apart once again. So about two years ago, or no, not even, about a year and a half ago, I moved into my current apartment that I'm in now. And ever since, I just stuck this plant in a south-facing window and it has just grown exponentially. I actually got rid of all the other plants in the pot because they were just dead stumps at this point, and this was really the only one that was growing incredibly well. So I removed it, I propagated it, and now it's in its own pot and about ready to be uh, upped in, or repotted into a new pot. As you can see, these aerial roots are going crazy and I already have a pot, I just need to get the amount of soil to pot this plant up. But yeah, this plant has just really done incredibly well for me and it really has cemented a place in my heart. Um, I've been calling this plant Thematophyllum bipinatifidum, that is the true taxonomy of this plant. Um, Years ago, it was known as uh, Philodendron bipinatifidum. It was recently reclassified, I believe last summer, um, into a new genus of plants, Thematophyllum. So many, or not many, there was a few Philodendrons, um, more of the ones that kind of grow in this manner and then they'll eventually form like a nice uh, trunk or like a tree kind of form. Uh, those, many of those plants were reclassified into the genus Thematophyllum. However, you will probably find this plant sold as Philodendron celloum. I have no idea where that name came from. It is taxonomically incorrect, but we are going to accept it because that is how this plant is sold. So if you are looking to purchase a Thematophyllum bipinatifidum, you're probably going to be searching for a Philodendron celloum. But this plant is just an absolute monster. It grows so well it gets huge um it really takes over a space so if you're looking for a plant to quite literally take over your home thematophyllum bipinatophyllum is the plant for you as long as you have enough light number three really has a place in my heart it is my monstera deliciosa variegated undescribed so as you can see this is certainly a variegated monstera however the variegation is quite different than you normally see so this plant i had actually found i did not purchase this plant i found it growing in one of the 10-inch pots at my work, Urban Jungle, and this is going to be very glossy, so it's going to be catching a lot of the sun through this video, but whatever. I found this plant growing in one of the Monsteras at my work in the 10-inch pot, and I just like was searching around the pots, just like caring for them, and I found this leaf. I believe it was the one right here, so I'll get up and show you guys. So this leaf right here had just these few splotches on the leaves, and I didn't really know what was up, but I wasn't about to sell this plant. So I very carefully uh, took it out of the clump of the monsteras in the pot, potted it in its own pot, and here we are many months later. So I believe the first leaf that really came out after that one was this one right here, which really assured me that we had some variegation going on. And ever since then, it's put off some leaves with a little bit of variegation. They've put off some leaves with a lot of variegation. As you can see, we now finally have a leaf with a fenestration in it, although the variegation is quite light on this leaf. However, this plant just really means a lot to me. I don't really have many plants that are undescribed, um, or at least truly undescribed. There could be some that are undescribed to me but really do have a name, but uh, this plant right here is really the one I have reached out to so many plant experts. I have reached out to NSC Tropicals, I have reached out to the Potted Elephant, um, and they all don't know what this plant is. So I just really, really love this plant. It means so much to me. I'm sure there is more of these out in the world. I'm, you know, this is a plant, obviously. But it just really means a lot to me. I love that this was my first variegated Monstera before my white variegated Monstera. This is the one I've had and it just, has always stuck around and it's growing incredibly well. It's almost like my own little science experiment. So it really just means so much to me and I've been really enjoying watching this grow. I know many of you guys have been asking for an update on this plant actually, so this is a great time to update you on how this plant has been doing. It has grown so well and I'm getting very excited to give it a little snip snip once it puts off another leaf or two. So we'll see what happens with that down the line. So the next two plants, they're definitely the plants that mean the most to me. However, I feel like they are the ones that every time I post them on social media, they get like the least attention. So I usually just like don't even bother anymore, but they just mean the world to me. They are the most exciting plants that I own and probably the most <laughs> boring plants to you guys. But um, these plants are my more botanical garden species of houseplants. So they're something, if you were to walk into a garden center, you would not find this plant, at least this one, maybe the other one, but they are much more out there. They really, just have a place in my heart. They're really wonderful plants, so without further ado, number two is Cissus adenopoda. 
So I believe this plant is truly in the genus Siphostemma. However, for the sake of this video, we're gonna call it the Cissus because that's how I purchased it as. Um, this plant is in the Vitaceae family, which is the grape family of plants. So grapes, the grapes that we eat are Vitus, that's their genus, so they're the Vitaceae family. So as you can see, this plant grows very, very similar to grapes, if you've ever been to a vineyard. But I love this plant when I purchased this plant. It was in this pot. You can see some of the old leaves are starting to get a little tired. But ever since I just had it sitting in here, this plant has decided to climb up the leather straps of my hanging planter, and I love the way it looks. This plant just really rounds out the jungle feeling in my home. The leaves are incredible to look at. I love them so much. I feel like normally people tell me they're like, they look like poison ivy and I'm like, screw off. Anyway, this plant, I love it so much. It is so incredible to top it off. Are you ready? We're gonna do a little flip. And <gasps> it's purple on the back. This is my favorite characteristic of plants. If you have ever watched my videos, I probably can't shut up about the plants that are purple or red or white on the back. They are just the coolest plants to me. That is my favorite characteristic of plants. When they're one color on the front and you flip it over and it's a completely different color. And when this plant is shining in the light, it is like so beautiful. The leaves are incredibly fuzzy. They are just so fun to feel and it grows like a freaking weed. It is now at the top of this thing. I have no idea what it is doing. It is going all over the place. But as you can see, like I, this plant just brings me so much joy. Like I, I love this plant. I love Cissus adenopoda. It is one of my favorite plants my second favorite plant because there is one more I like a little bit more than this, but this plant, it's so incredible. Like I, I, it's already huge, but I'd really like it to get crazy so I can start giving it some cuts and start to share it with people. But it's just, it's really hard for me to cut this plant too because it just means so much to me and I just love the way it looks. So I love this plant, Cissus adenopoda. If you have a means of getting it, I actually think I got this one from Steve's Leaves, so it really isn't that inaccessible, but it's like I said, you wouldn't you wouldn't walk into a Home Depot or find this, or you definitely, I wouldn't be able to get this at the shop that I work at, so it really, just knowing that really has such a place in my heart, and look at it, like it, it it's, it's one of the coolest plants ever. Before we do number one, while I was making this video, I filled out a whole piece of paper on like what were my favorite plants at the moment, and I was trying to narrow it down, but of course there were a few that I just have to mention to you guys as my honorable mentions because I can't just do my favorite houseplant video without talking about them. Uh, so of course my Seropegia woodii, or my string of hearts for being there from the beginning, my Calathea orbifolia for being the Calathea for me to grow like a weed, and it was also the Calathea I spent the most money on, so it damn well best grow like a weed, my Ficus elastica ruby for literally coming back from the dead a few years ago and growing exponentially well and literally having a trunk almost as thick as my thumb. And then my Peperomia tetragonas because they're great, they're the Peperomia I have the most of, they grow so incredibly well. And my Peperomia graviolans because this thing has not only like quadrupled in size since I bought it, but a planter fell on it a few months ago and it got chopped in half and this plant has like completely healed itself, grown back and more beautiful than ever. So these plants just mean the world to me. I highly recommend growing them all. They're all incredibly easy. The ficus, not so much, but like once you get it growing, it's fine. But anyway, the number one plant, my favorite house plant right now as of spring 2019 is Senecio macroglossus variegatus. They also call this plant variegated wax ivy. And I feel like the world thinks this plant is so boring because it looks a lot like ivy. However, I love ivy and I talk crap on ivy a lot because it's genuinely a really crappy house plant. This plant needs so much light and it needs so much moisture, it needs so much everything to keep it from getting spider mites. It's just, it's not an ideal house plant. And, and while this plant also needs a lot of light, this plant just is a lot more carefree, it grows ins insanely well, and it looks just like ivy. In fact, I think it looks a lot better because it's got a lot more character, it's succulent, it's it's just a really, really lovely house plant. This is a plant that, once again, I. I can't get it myself to sell it at Urban Jungle, um, so it's kind of more out there and more rare to me. I think you can buy it from Steve's Leaves, but I was personally selling this plant last year in my Etsy shop, you might remember if you've been around that long, but I ordered a hundred plugs of this plant and I was growing them in my home under grow lights. They really grow the most in the winter time, so they didn't grow that much for me as I was growing them out, they just kind of grew like double the size, but uh, once winter hit, which is when Senecios grow, or what the, the genus of this plant is, this plant kicked in the gear, it did not stop growing, I've had to hang it up, it has just grown exponentially. I cannot believe how much this plant has grown. It's climbed all the way up the top of its hanger. It's starting to tendril around itself. It's just wrapping itself everywhere. 
I love this plant, it's incredible. And some of the newer growth, it's kind of hard to see inside the pot, is getting some of that like strawberries and cream red edge. So it's, you know, it's receiving a lot of light in my south facing window. But this plant just really means the world to me. It looks incredible. It's got that urban vibe from looking like ivy, but it just grows so insanely well. Um, I know I need to water it when I feel the leaves and they no longer feel succulent. I water it the next day, it's, it's fine. It's succulent again. I wait, I just, you know, every week or so, I just feel the leaves and I'm like, hey, do you need water? And it's like, no, or it's like, yes, water me. And I, I just, I live Listen to it. It tells me what it needs, and and I love that. Much easier than all the other Senecios, the string of pearls, the string of dolphins. Like this plant is a piece of cake. As long as you got enough light, it's still a succulent. So you need to give a lot of light. But I highly recommend trying this plant. It's a shame how underrated it is. It just really brings me so much joy. I just. I love it so much. I'm so happy I got to make this video today where I talk about my favorite house plants. You can see I'm like really excited to talk about them because they're the ones I love the most and I feel like I just never really talk about them for some reason or as I said because I feel like they're not that interesting but I think you guys are gonna find them interesting today. So to recap, number five was Scindapsis pictus, all the cultivars, I love them all. My Thematophyllum bipinatophytum was number four, my Monstera deliciosa variegated undescribed was number three, Cissus adenopoda or Siphostema was number two, and then number one is my Senecio macroglossus variegatus. Thank you guys so much again for watching. If you don't already, follow me on Instagram at Philly Foliage, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!